All right. Um, can you guys all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Sure. Sure. All right. Nice. So, um, yeah, today is going to be our final lesson. Okay, just let me record real quick. Okay, it's already recording. Okay. All right. So today is going to be our last lesson for the Roblox Studio course, and we're going to be learning about some final contents, which are sounds, lights, and camera. Okay. This will help you um make your game look better and also help you understand like some basics of some final like information about how it should work and especially with like sounds you can make add more things into your game. So that is what we're going to be learning like today. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we know that um we've been trying to create games so does anyone want to like share out their game or like show something they have made in the past or anything um it's okay if you don't want to share but if you have something that you made and you want to share it to your class you can share your screen and do it uh okay it, it's okay if and no one wants to share and i'll just talk about what we need to talk about today first. All right. All right, so I guess we're just gonna be moving on. And uh, first let's try to download this template, okay? Um. Okay, so this template is going to be in Roblox Studio and let me show you guys where to find it. All right, so I think it should be this one wait not that one um yeah i think it's like the team ffa yeah it's this one so can if you guys can see my screen so go open roblox studio first and then after you're inside roblox studio go to the all templates screen which is right on top here and then you should see like all the different templates, right? Like before. And today we're going to be clicking on Team FFA Arena, which is another template that Roblox made for us. And then we're going to be using this template to explore the different tools like sound, camera, yeah, sound, camera, and the different effects as well. So. All right, so just click on the icon right here. And then after you click on it, you're going you're going to see, um, all right, just wait for it to load. There should be, um, yes. So after you click on it, you're going to see some trees here. You're gonna see a bunch of houses here and you can see some spawn locations for here. And yeah, and then it should be daytime. So you should see some skies as well on top. So this is what you should be seeing after you click on the template. And you can also see this big grass field. And there's two sides um, and they're separated by a fence. And this is a uh, basically a template for like a gun battle thing all right okay so all right so now we can just like oh it's not even good All right, so now I'll talk about like the game camera. All so first, um, as you can see here, there are many different types of game cameras and basically it decides what you see, what the player sees on the screen. 
So for example, the top one is like a first person view. So you may have learned before that there are many different views in like games. So if you're like playing Minecraft or like um, some other like first person shooting games, you cannot really see yourself. So for example, in this photo, you can see your arm and your gun, but you couldn't really see your own head or your own body, right? And this is a classic example of first person view, which means that you see more of what's around you and not yourself. And this is commonly used for like action games. So games like Elder Scroll or like um this game, which is like like a shooting game and like Minecraft as well. You use first person view. And down here you can see Fortnite, which uses a third person view because you can see your own um character. See, this is the character that you're controlling. And then you can see it, I think. Yeah, you can see it very well. Um, so which is different from the top one because the top one you couldn't really see your own body, right? And so the bottom one is a third person view game like Fortnite. And there are many other games like even some 2D games use third person um perspective. So there's a small but also important difference. And the bottom one, some examples might be like games like Brawl Stars or for Roblox. Roblox allows you to choose between different perspectives. So you could do first person or third person um, depending on what the player wants or you can, or developers can also like, de like decide it for the players if they want their game to be in a different perspective. And yeah, so these are two different perspectives and they're all achieved with something called camera. When you hear the word camera, you kind of think of used to take photos, right? But a camera in the game world is basically a view. So it shows you, shows the players what they see on a screen, right? So for example, right now, all the things I see is determined by a camera, right? And basically, I have a world. And in order to see the world, I use a camera which takes a photo of this world and displays it on the player's screen. So it's kind of like our eyes, but instead it's a screen and not like something that's like much bigger and covers more areas, right? And you can see it, see that it's part of a camera because when we go to the camera in the workspace tab over here, and we adjust some settings, for example, the field of view, like we change it to 150. You can see how our um, screen changes. And this is because, and you can see how it changes, right? So now we see more parts and it's wider on the sides, right? It's like more stretched. And this is because we changed some settings about the camera um, because the camera shows what we see on the screen. And then and the thing you change is called field of view. And normally it's at around 70, but when you, you can also increase it or decrease it to see the world differently. So if we make it like really small, then it's like really zoomed in. But if we like increase the value, we zoom out a bit, so. Yeah. All right, and that was what I just talked about. It's called field of view, um, which is which determines how much of the world you see. So just now, I just showed you an example of it. If the value is very small, like ten, then you see less of the world, and it can be used for different things. So when you're very zoomed in. It kind of looks like uh, like you're trying to observe something. So if you want to build a tool in Roblox, that's like um, helps you, helps you look really far. Then you could use 
uh, smaller field of view. For example, like when you have a gun, right, and you're aiming, you will want the field of view to be smaller. So it kind of looks like you're trying to aim your gun at a place. But if you increase your field of view like, like this, then it's a much different view of the world and you can see much more things, right? You can see the walls here. So maybe for this one, you're aiming like a cannon or something bigger. So then you need to see more of the game in order to aim well. And you can also adjust it if you want to. All right. And let's see. All right, so yeah, camera can also move with the player, but it can also like stay still, right? So let's say you are um trying to play an action game, like for example in Minecraft or in basically the Autoblox games. Normally the camera will follow the player, right? So let's say if I press play, let me just show you guys an example of this. Okay, so it has to wait. 23 seconds first. All right. We're just going to wait. Um, normally, the camera follows the players. And you can see that when I go in the game, when I spawn, the camera, which is, yeah, which shows what's on the screen, will be following the player around. And this is normally what happens when you create a Roblox game. But you can also change the camera so that it doesn't follow the player. So right now, you can see how when I move, the camera moves with me, right? And this is a third person perspective because we can see the player. If you can see yourself, um, their full body basically, you're in a third person view. And let's say I zoom in, right? I zoom in by pressing I and O on your keyboard. Now I'm in a first person perspective like this, right? And but but if I change the mode of the camera, um, so I go to workspace and I go to camera. Uh, normally you would use scripting for this. I'm just showing you, like there's different types of cameras. We can go to like, um, fixed. So you can see now, right? the camera is not following the player. So if I go really far away, the camera doesn't follow the humanoid or our player. But if I switch back to custom, which is a mode of camera, then it automatically comes back to the original view. And there are many different types of camera and they all have a bit different types like this. Um, Jack, do you have a question? Yes. That my can I can I share my screen? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you ask again? Can I share my screen? Oh, you want to share a screen? Do you have like a project? Yeah, you can share. It's like. Okay. All right. So I'll pause my screen share and then you can screen. Okay. And then you can share your screen. Oh, uh, okay. Wait, hold on. I need to end the screen share. All right, Jack, do you want to? All right. You can share. So I didn't got um, when I go. Then I can go like here. I can go the upper bit. Okay, so you need to. All right, do you know how to um right click on you? Just are you using uh which computer are you using? Big do you have a mouse? I have a mouse. Okay, so you have a mouse. Can you yeah. right click and then so you can change the camera angle if you right click? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Oh, 
Um, let me, I think, wait, so when you right click, you show something different. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Oh, oh, don't, don't click it. Like you have to hold it and drag it. So you're kind of clicking. So you, after you want it, after you left click, you want to hold it and you kind of drag it around. So left click and drag. Yeah. All right. You got it. And now when you're dragging, use your arrow keys. And yeah. Now you can move around. See? All right. You got it. Um, you got it? Okay, nice. All right, so I'll just continue my screen share. Okay, so that's it about cameras. Um, yeah. Oh, next I'll talk about lights. So lights is also something very important in the game. It helps your game be brighter and also like it makes your game look better as well because if you have a game at night or if you have a like a cave or something, lights can really make that place look more cool and have more dynamics, okay? So in order to show how the lights work, first we're going to turn our game into a night scene right so now you see it's very bright and if i put a light down it wouldn't really like make a big difference so what i'll do is i'll go to lighting like we talked about last time and we're going to change the clock time which determines um what time the world is the, our game world is and right now it's 13. 13 is one o'clock, which is around in the noon. And I'm going to change it to maybe like 20, right? So remember, go to lighting and down here in data, you see a clock time. And now I'm going to be in the night. So you can see, yeah, like the moon and the stars and everything's dark, right? Because we're in nighttime. After you change the clock time to 20, um, we're going to make a new part. So, we're, so you can create a part by just clicking on top. So part, and then you can just place a part like this, right? So you can just click it once. After you click it, you should see a part in your game like this. So this is pretty simple stuff. And to add a light onto it, we're going to press the plus sign right next to part here after you click it and then we're just going to search light so remember to type in the english after you yeah after you put the part in you want to press the plus sign and search light in here and then you see three different types of lights for now, we're just gonna use point light. So just click on the first one. It should be a light bulb with some lines around it. Yeah, it's a point light. And after you place it, you should see a small light like this over here. Shouldn't be too big, but it should be something like this for now. And okay, like this. After you put a light in, you should see some lines, which shows how strong the light is and a small white glow around the part, which is what the part, which is what the light did. It kind of lit up a little bit, but we're going to change some settings very soon. Okay. Let me talk about the point light first for a little bit. A point light is basically a light around an object, okay? In Roblox, in order to use a light or you want the light to show in um, your game, you, it must be attached to a part, 
And this means that you cannot put a light in workspace because um, you need a very specific location for part in order for it to glow. So let's say I want to put it in like camera, right? You can see nothing happens to our world. Or if you put it inside workspace, if you put it in workspace or camera, nothing will happen to our world because a part, a light can only attach to an attachment or part. But for now, always use a light with a part, okay? So you can see a part here. In order for this part to glow and to um, disperse some light, all you have to do is just put the part, put the light inside the part by dragging it onto the part. And when it's like inside the part, you can see like this, you're gonna be able to see the light glowing, okay? And after you put the light in, every time you move the part, so let's say move the part up on the left, on the right. When you move the part, you can see how the light follows the part, right? Like this. So, so now you can determine where the light is going to shine at by just moving the part. Okay. There are many things you can change. For example, the light color, the range, brightness, and even, and yeah, basically the most important ones are light, range, and brightness. And in order to change the settings, you just have to click on the light by opening, remember to open Explore and Properties. So after you open Explore and Properties, when you click on the light, you'll see many different options here down here, right? The first setting is brightness, which really shows how bright the light is. Let's say I want the light to be super bright. All I have to do is turn the brightness to maybe like 10. And you can see that the bottom part of the terrain is now very white compared to the gray part, right? You can see that it's brighter here. But it doesn't really, um, it's a very small light. It doesn't go to very far. So if you want the light to be super bright and have a bigger impact, you just want to increase the range of the light. So let's say I want the light to be 50, which means that it will cover the entire ground like this. So now you see the light is much bigger and it covers so much more space like this, right? And so now that it's so much like covers so much area, we don't want the light to be too bright. So we're just going to reduce the brightness to around two. And now it looks a bit better because it isn't too bright anymore. Okay. All right, to make the light look a bit better, you might want to switch to the future technology in the lighting place. So you can see that, okay, Foxo looks like this. Doesn't look too good, right? And shadow map looks a bit better because there's shadows. Um, To enable shadows, all you have to do is click on shadows here for the light. So when you click yes, you're going to see some shadows work for the light. So for example, let me drag this object here and you can move this thing down a bit. Um, maybe you can see a bit of shadow, but I'm not too sure. Yeah, the shadow is not very obvious, but you should see a little bit like around here and for this as well, but Right now, it's not too obvious. All right, but you want to change the technology to future. And when you change it to future, there's much more shadows, right? So for this object, you can also see a lot of shadows here, right? For this light. 
and some shadows here as well. So after changing to future, it looks much better. Okay, and after changing the brightness and the range, we can change the color. So let's say I want it to be like a red color, right? You can just change it like this by just clicking on color and dragging it around. I can change it to whatever color I want. For now, let's do like a red color like this. See? So now it looks like there's a red glow, right? Around the part. And just to make it look a bit better, I'll just change the brightness to around 1.5, maybe make it a bit bigger. All right, so now you'll see a point light just kind of illuminating, kind of shining on here, on this part of the map. And when you play the game, you, you can see the light inside your game. All right, you have to wait another 20 seconds. All right, just let me talk a bit more about this first. That was point light. So you can see how the light shines around the object, right? It's like a circle next to the part. But the next thing we're going to talk about is a spotlight. The a difference between spotlight and point light is that point light shines around the object, but a spotlight shines at an angle. So think about a light bulb. If you have a light bulb, right? The light is going everywhere, so it goes to every angle all around the light bulb, right? And the spotlight is more like when you're looking at a performance, like when you go to see a concert or you see a drama, then on the stage, they have these kind of like big lights that shines a ray of light onto a performer, right? So, and the spotlight is not making everything look bright, but making a part of um, the pl place around the part to be brighter. So now you can see that only the left side of the part is really bright, but the other sides are dark. So it's only a certain angle. All right, and now that we're in the game, all right, so you can see the part shining some light over here but it's like kind of dark and this is because maybe because the part is like um on the ground so we're gonna see if we can change that all right let me just leave first person first all right let's see if i can move the part a bit up All right, so just now it wasn't too bright because the part was on the ground and you can make the part look brighter if you move it up, right? So if you move it up, now it's much brighter and you can see the light shining on your player. And if you don't want this part to be in the way, all you have to do is make the part invisible by increasing the part's transparency. So now you can see that there's only one light and there's no part, but you can still jump on the part because the part can be touched, right? So in the order, if you don't want the part to be touched, you just have to set um, the can collide option. Can collide means that it can, it has physics, it can touch with other parts. If you just uncheck can collide, then now you can't really touch the part anymore and it will be invisible and untouchable. So it will be better to make it very far like this. Right. All right, so that's point light. And let's see what happens when we switch the point light um, into a spotlight. So we're going to make the part visible again. But this time, instead of using point light, we're going to be using a spotlight. All right, where did the part go? 
All right, it's over here. So first, let's delete the point light by just clicking, by just pressing delete on your keyboard. And instead of a point light, we're going to be using a spotlight. So just search spots or search light and then choosing the second one. Spotlight is like a little light bulb with an area after it. So after you click spotlight, you're going to see like a cone, right? Like this. So this is already pretty different from the point light because the point light is like a circle. It's like a sphere around the part, right? But when you have a cone, when you have a spotlight, now it's only a angle of light like this, right? Going out from the part, there's like a circle which shows where there will be light and which side there won't be light. So right now, there should only be light on the left side and not the right side. It really isn't showing because the range is not big enough for it to cover the entire area. So first we're going to be going to the spotlight and then we're going to increase the brightness. I mean, increase the range first because the range tells us how far the light goes, right? So instead of 16, Maybe we want to do like 50. And we're also going to move the part a bit closer to here so that it really shines on the different objects like this. We're going to rotate a little bit. This, see? Actually, we're just going to move over here so that it shines the open ground. Like this. We can make it even bigger, like 100, so it goes a very long way. Oh, the maximum range is 60, so you couldn't really make it bigger than 60. Then we're just going to move it a bit closer. All right. So right now the light is very soft and not very visible. To change that, of course, we can change the brightness, which basically determines how bright the light is. We're going to make it around 10, I guess, to make it look a bit bright, brighter. Like this. Um, I'm to. I just want to make it shine on different parts, so I think this looks cool. So now you already see the difference between the spotlight and the point light, right? In the spot, in the spot point light, the light is around the part. So if this were a point light on the part, then the left side, the right side, every side of the part will be bright. But right now, only the left side. So you can see a very obvious shape of the part of the light is standing like here, like a triangle like this, right? And not the entire area around the part. So that's the difference between spotlight and point light. Right now, you can also change the angle. So if we change the angle to be bigger, then it covers more area. And if we change the angle to be smaller, then it's a smaller area. So right now we're just gonna do around maybe 126. So it covers more places. Okay. And we're also going to check shadow. So now there are some shadows over here. It's gonna be um, kind of Block the light's gonna be blocked by different objects and it will look better and more realistic as well. All right, so now you see that it's shining on the left side, right? But what if we want wanted to shine on different sides? You can see here on the on the settings that there's an option called face. A face basically determines which side the light is shining at. 
Right now it's shining at the left side. We can change the face to back, to bottom, to front, which is our current one, our left, like here over here. And you can see if I zoom out, right? The right or even the top. So when I shine on the top, nothing happens because there's no parts over here to show that, to show the light. But when you change to other options like this, you can really see the different light going different directions, right? Yeah, and again, you can change the color. So we're just gonna change to a very yellow color this time, like this, which is pretty cool, like this, all right? I'm just gonna make the part neon so it looks a bit better, like this. All right, and now um, after the spotlight, you can see how um, we adjusted the color, the brightness, the angle of the light. And yeah, you can also rotate the object to make it point somewhere else. So instead of like changing the side of the object, you can also rotate it. So remember, go to home and you can see the rotate button on top. If you rotate the part, you can make the light point basically anywhere. So right now it's pointing over here, but you can make a point everywhere and you can also you use scripting to make it like loop around like always turn like this right so many things you can do with the object but right now we're just going to make it stay here all right so to have multiple lights all you have to do is duplicate the part and the light is going to be duplicated as well a duplicate just means copying another part and making it going to somewhere go to somewhere else so right now we're going to press duplicate at home to make another part. And then you can try to move it like this. And I'm gonna rotate it like this, right? So now there are many different lights. The map can really be brighter. So I'm going to make some light shine like this. Right. Maybe another light just on this side. See? Um just gonna change it a bit. This all right. So now you really see that our map is much brighter, right? And there are still some things you can change, including the bloom effect. So if you guys go to lighting and down here, you'll see something called bloom. It's like a small, of like very, there's like a, it's like many circles and there's like a small dark circle in the middle. And that's called the bloom effect. A bloom effect changes light and also glow in your game and makes it look a bit better by increasing the glow or decreasing glow. So right now you can see that intensity is one. All right, let me see if I can change anything here. All right, so basically if you have glowing items, for example, this part over here, you can kind of change how bright it is by um, out by changing like the intensity. So if you have like a low intensity, then it's glowing a smaller, like glowing less. But when you increase it, it's going to be brighter like this. You can also change the size. If the size is bigger, then it's going to glow like farther. And the thresh, the th and then you can change the threshold as well. So there are many things you can change to change the type of glow for the object. All right. 
All right, so now let's one more thing. So basically, that was a bloom effect. Okay, so finally, for our final 15 minutes, let's talk about sounds, okay? So sounds is also pretty important in OL Studio. If you want to have like background music or if you want a gun to have a gunshot effect, you normally want um sounds to make it more realistic, right? To make a sound, the first thing you have to do is create a sound object in the workspace, all right? So you can do that by going to workspace like this, just clicking on it, press the plus button, and you're going to type sound inside it. So go to workspace and press sound. So you can search sound first and then press sound to create a sound object like this one. So this is the first step. Go to workspace, plus, and sound. After you create a sound object, um, right now there is nothing inside the sound. So you actually have to go find the sound to put it inside it um, in order for your game to actually know what sound it is, right? And to find the sound, you have to go to view and open the toolbox. Or you can open it over here. It should be a hammer with a circle, with a square. Remember, toolbox is the uh, most common place for you to find different resources. And there are not only models inside toolbox. There are also plugins, audio, which is basically sounds, um, images, meshes, and even fonts. All right. So right now we're going to click on audio and you can see the sound effects down here and you can also see music. So right now we're just going to go to music because we want our game to have a background music, right? And then you can see many different music down here like this. All right, so which one should I choose? Let's see what the first one is. You can make the sound play by clicking on the start button um, on the left. So let's just listen to this one first. All right, let's see if it will play. Because sometimes, yeah, it's something if it doesn't play. All right. You guys hear a sound? There should be some sound playing from, all right. So, all right, so that's basically um, the sound playing. If you can't really hear it, you can try it on your own Roblox Studio and it should work, right? So for, okay, so in order to put this sound in our game, you all you have to do is um, left click, I mean, right click on it right click on the sound and copy the asset ID. Or you can press insert and it will create a new sound in your workspace. But if you want um, only the asset ID for the sound, all you have to do is right click on the sound and you're gonna see two options, view in browser and copy asset ID. We're going to copy the asset ID and you have to paste the asset ID into the sound ID option in your Explorer. But this one might be a bit too complicated. So I think it will be better if you just press insert, right? Just press insert and you'll see the sound over here. After you find the sound here, um, okay, so right now it's inside the other sound, right? You're just, you just have to move it out to workspace and we can delete this sound because that's the, um, um, the one with no sound ID. So when you have a, when you see something here in the sound ID, you can preview the sound by just clicking on the play in the preview here. All right, so now you see the sound playing 
and there are many different options. For example, if you want the sound to keep playing, even after the sound ends, you can check the looped button. And that means that the sound will keep playing in a loop and will, will never stop unless you tell it to stop. Other than looped, you can change um, if it's playing or not. And we want it to be playing, right? Because it's a background music. So we're just going to check playing. Um, and you can also change the volume. So right now it's at 0 0.5 volume. If you want it to sound um, a bit louder, you can change the volume to one. So, so now we have to see what's playing. And there's also the playback speed, which determines how fast the sound is playing. If you have a bigger value, it's going to play faster. So if I have a playback speed of two, when I press preview, you can see it's kind of playing a bit faster. But if I change it to a smaller value than one, like 0 0.5, it's going to play slow like this. Right? And one is going to be the normal value. So it's going to be the original speed of the sound. You can see like here. Right? All right, so after you check looped and you also check playing these two options, then they're going to, the sound is going to play inside the game um, after you join the game, right? And you can also put a sound inside a part. And when you do that, the sound is going to have some range. So when you put the sound inside a physical object, the sound is going to have a range, which means that you could um, determine if, like for example, a player is really far from a part, then it wouldn't really hear the sound. All right, so let's try that later. Right now, we just want to put the sound inside the workspace, which um, makes the sound play like wherever you are. And even if you're like really far away, you can still hear the sound. So we can try just by joining the game and let's see if the sound is inside. All right, so you can already hear the sound. All right. So you can already hear the sound Um, once you're inside the game. It's going to be playing for everyone. So no matter which player you are, everyone can hear the music. All right. We're just going to jump around a bit. All right, so now you can see that when we're inside the game, we have the music, and it will make your game sound much better and make the player feel a bit better. Okay, so that was the uh, um, background music. And now what if you want um, the music to be, to play like a speaker? So you want the music to um, play at a certain place, but when you leave that place, the music is no longer playing. And this is, um, so in order to do that, you want to put the sound inside a part. So when you put the sound in the part, then the sound is going to have a range, like the light. And when you um, go too far away from the part, then the sound will disappear. So first, let's make another part just to be, um, just to hold the sound. And let's make this one neon as well, so it's very clear. And let's make it like bright. Let's make it blue to show that this is where the sound is. And now we're going to put the music inside the part. So you can see here, this is our music here. We're going to put the sound inside the part. And when you put it inside the part, the sound is going to have a range. And this is going to, um, 
help you like determine how far the sound is going to play in the real world. For example, like yeah, in the real world, if you have maybe um a speaker, right? You wouldn't hear a speaker if you're too far away from it, right? So let's say if this part is a speaker, then we'll determine how um how far the sound can reach. And right now, so you can change that by going to the emitter. You can see two different options. It's roll off max distance and roll off min distance. And right now the max distance is set to a really high number. Um, what you want to do is you want the two numbers to be um, at a certain range so that um, when you exit that range, then the music, the sound cannot be heard anymore. So the roll off max distance is basically um, the distance of you and the part, the max distance between the sound and the player for the sound to be heard. So for example, if this one is 50, then if the part and the player is 50 distance away, like big, um, bigger or equal to 50 distance away, then the sound couldn't really be heard anymore, which means that if you're like really far away, then you couldn't hear it. But if you're closer, like within 50 units inside this um, range of the sound, then the sound will be heard. So right now we're going to try with 100 and zero and see how, how it sounds like. So let's press play and all right. So this time you already don't hear the sound, which probably means that we're on very far away from the from the sound. Remember when you put a sound to with a when you put a sound in the part, um the center of that sound is going to be at the part, right? But if you put the part somewhere else like in the workspace and not in a part, then it's not going to, yeah, it's not going to have a center. It's just going to play like everywhere, like and everywhere. So I'm just going to walk to the place the sound is at. All right, let's turn the volume up so you guys can hear what happens when I approach the sound. All right, so it's not already playing. Let me see if there's something wrong with the sound. All right, it's over here. It wasn't moving. Okay. okay. All right, for some reason it wasn't really playing. Maybe it's because the... Uh... Okay. All right, so I think the problem was that you you can't have the min distance be zero. All right, all right. Okay, so right now you can, all right, so right now when I'm standing over here, you can't hear the music. So let me just turn the volume up. Right now there is no sound playing. And okay, so the max distance I have is 50, which basically means that I am 50 distance away from the sound. And if I'm out of that range, then the sound cannot be heard. So right now there is no sound playing. But if I go closer, you can hear a bit of the sound, right? Like this. All right, so now you can see a bit of the sound, right? I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's a bit of a sound playing. If I go really far away, nothing happens, right? If I go a bit closer, 
you hear a small bit of sound. If I go really close, it's really loud, right? But if I leave, leave like this, then it's going to be much quieter. So this is kind of like a speaker, right? When you go really close, the sound is much bigger. But if you leave it, then the sound is going to get much quieter. You see how the volume of the sound is needed based on how far away I'm from the sound. All right. Yeah, so when I was close to the sound, it was much louder. But when I when I'm like away from the sound, then it gets quieter and quieter. So that's basically roll off max distance and min distance. And from what I just tested, you want the min distance to be around 10. I think it's the better value. So if it's zero, then it doesn't really work. You want it to be around 10 for it to be where you sound better. And to make it make the transition more smooth, you want the roll off mode to be inverse tapered, which I just tested. I think it's better than inverse. It will make it sound a bit better. So you can just change that to inverse tapered and it should work like what I just showed you. All right, so that's basically sounds. There's many options you can change. So you don't have to use my music. There are so many more music you can try yourself. So you can just go to toolbox and select your the sound you want all right um all right so that's basically the end of our roll off studio course it was 10 lessons and yeah i really enjoy teaching you guys you guys are participate sometimes but mostly you guys listen very well and i really hope you guys continue your roll off studio development journey it was great to teach you guys and you guys are great students does anyone want to share out like their favorite part about the robot studio course you can type it in the chat if you want like what you enjoyed in this course and maybe what you want to learn more about you can just type in the chat and send it to everyone All right. Does anyone enjoy like the tycoon part where we learned about how to build a tycoon? Or we also did like the obby and the different pirate scenes. So we did, we actually did a lot in the course and I hope you guys learned something from it. Um, Yeah, you can always explore yourself. You don't have to only be limited by what I taught you. You can go online and search for tutorials on YouTube, or you can like kind of explore the different options. Like when you press the plus button, there are so many more things you can try out yourself. But most of the time you want to use like a tutorial or something. So um, you really know how to do it, all right. And that's gonna be the end of the course. Thank you so much for your um support. And I wish you guys have a lot of fun developing games. It's really, um it feels really good once you know how to do it. And you guys all have at least some basic knowledge of Roblox Studio after this course. It also helps with different things as well. Like for example, I taught you guys how to do some modeling and also how to do a bit of scripting. So, it's going to help with other things you do with game development, game development as well. All right. All right. It was a pleasure teaching you and that's going to be end of our lesson as well. Um, all right. Maybe I won't see you guys next week because the course ended. So maybe next time when I have another course, you guys can sign up as well. But you guys can always like send messages in a group chat.
if you have any questions or there is any ideas you have and I can kind of answer them as well. All right. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye.